Now we come to Newton's third law. If one object exerts a force on another, the other exerts the same force in opposite direction on the one. I read it again. If one object exerts a force on another, the other exerts the same force in opposite direction on the one. And I normally summarize that as follows the third law as action equals minus reaction. And the minus sign indicates then that it opposes. So you sit on your seats and you're pulled down on your seats because of gravity and the seats will push back on you with the same force. Action equals minus reaction. I held the baseball in my hand. The baseball pushes on my hand with a certain force. I push on the baseball with the same force. I push against the wall with a certain force. The wall pushes back in the opposite direction with exactly the same force. The third law always holds. Whether the objects are moving or accelerated makes no difference. All moments in time, the force, we call it actually the contact force between two objects. One on the other is always the same as the other on one, but in the opposite direction. Let us work out a very simple example. We have an object which has a mass M1. This is object number one. And M1 is five kilograms. And here, attached to it, is an object two. And M2 equals 15 kilograms. There is a force. And the force is coming in from this direction. This is the force. And the magnitude of the force is 20 newtons. What is the acceleration of this system? F equals ma. Clearly, the mass is the sum of the two. This force acts on both. So we get m1 plus m2 times a. This is 20. This is 20. So a equals 1 meters per second squared in the same direction as f. So the whole system is being accelerated with one meters per second squared. Now watch me closely. Now I single out this object. Here it is. Object number two. Object number one, while this acceleration takes place, must be pushing on object number two, otherwise object number two could never be accelerated. I call that force F. One, two, the force that one exerts on two. I know that number two has an acceleration of one. That's a given already. So here comes F equals ma. F, one, two, equals m2 times a. We know a is one. We know m2 is 15. So we see that the magnitude of the force, one, two, is 15 newtons. This force is 15. Now I'm going to isolate number one out. Here is number one. Number one experiences this force, F, which was the 20, and it must experience a contact force from number two. Somehow, number two must be pushing on number one, if one is pushing on number two. And I call that force F21. I know that number one is being accelerated, and I know the magnitude is one meter per second square. That's non-negotiable. And so we have that F, this one, plus F21 must be M1 times A. 
this is 1, this is 5, this is 20, and so this one, you can already see, is minus 15. F21 is in this direction, and the magnitude is exactly the same as F12. So you see, 1 is pushing on 2 with 50 newtons in this direction, 2 is pushing back on 1 with 50 newtons, and the whole system is being accelerated with 1 meter per second squared. Now in these two examples, the one whereby I had the baseball on my hand, you saw that it was consistent with the third law. In this example, you also see that it's consistent with the third law. The contact force from one on the other is the same as from the other on one, but in opposite signs. Is this a proof? No. Can the third law be proven? No. Do we believe in it? Yes. Why do we believe in it? Because all measurements, all experiment within the uncertainties are consistent with the third law. Action equals minus reaction. It is something that you experience every day. I remember I had a garden hose in the lawn and I would open the faucet and the garden hose would start to snake backwards. Why? Water squirts out. The garden hose pushes onto the water in this direction, the water pushes back onto the garden hose and it snakes back. Action equals minus reaction. You take a balloon. You take a balloon and you blow up the balloon. And you let the air out. The balloon pushes onto the air. The air must push onto the balloon. And therefore, when you let it go, the balloon will go in this direction, which is the basic idea behind a rocket. I love to play with balloons, don't you? So, if I do it like this, and I let it go, the air will come out in this direction. And so then... That means the balloon is pushing on the air in this direction, the air must be pushing on the balloon in this direction. There it goes. Whew. Didn't make it to the moon, but you saw the, the idea of a rocket. Action equals minus reaction. If you fire a gun, the gun exerts a force on the bullet. The bullet exerts an equal force on the gun, which is called the recoil. You feel that in your hands, in your shoulder. I have here a marvelous device, which is a beautiful example of action equals minus reaction. I show you from above what it looks like. You'll see more details later. This rotates about this axis rather freely. The axis is vertical. And we have here a reservoir of water, which we will heat up. It turns into steam, and these are hollow tubes, and the steam will squirt out. And so when the steam squirts out in this direction, the tube exerts a force on the steam in this direction, so the steam exerts an equal force in the opposite direction, and so the thing will start to rotate like this. And I would like to demonstrate that. You can see it now there. There's a little bit of luck there, you see it. So, we're going to heat it. Walking. When you walk, you push against the floor. The floor pushes back at you. And if the floor wouldn't push back at you, you couldn't even walk, you couldn't go forward. If you walk on ice, very slippery, you can't go anywhere. Because you can't push on the ice, so the ice won't push back on you. That's another example where you see action equals minus reaction. This engine is called Hero's engine. Hero, according to the Greek legend, was a priestess of Aphrodite. Let's first look at it.
she was a priestess of Aphrodite. And her lover, Leander, would swim across the Hellespont every night to be with her. And then one night, the poor guy drowned, and Hero threw herself into the sea. Very romantic thing to do, but of course also not very smart thing to do. On the other hand, it must have been a smart lady if she invented really this engine. Yesterday, I looked at the web, ask.com. It's wonderful. You can ask any question. You can say, how old am I? Now, you may not get the right answer, but you can ask any question. And I typed in Hero's Engine. And out popped a very nice, high-tech version of Hero's Engine. A soda can. You pop four holes in the soda can at the bottom. So here's your soda can. You pop four holes in here. But when you put a nail in there, you bend every time the nail to the same side. So the holes are slanted. You put it in water. You lift it out of water. And you have a an, an, uh, hero's engine. And I made it for you. It took me only five minutes. I went to one of MIT's machines, got myself a soda. Put the holes in it, and here it is. It's in the water there. When I lift it out, you'll see the water squirt. And there it goes. High-tech version of Hero's Engine. It also makes a bit of a mess, but OK. All right. <sighs> Try to make one. It's fun. And it's very quick. It doesn't take much time at all.